I would like to thank the organizers, Sri Subbaradi Garu, Sri Narsaradi, Ravi Sanaradi, and all other friends who have all living here in Chennai for organizing this evening get together. Chala Santoshanga Undi, Erosu Science Sanjaya Samayolo. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. On this occasion, I would like to share few of my thoughts, very few, very crisply. One, with my humble experience of uh, public life, right from MLA, MP, state, centre, party, government, and the constitutional position occupied, including the chairman of the upper house. I feel that we must all commit ourselves to the value system. We must preserve our culture and heritage. We must protect, promote, and propagate our mother tongue. We must live in harmony. We must all thrive for peace because peace is the prerequisite for progress. If you have tension, you cannot pay attention. It will be only retention and pretension. That's all. Keeping that in mind, we must all work for the peace. Share and care is the core of Indian philosophy. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So we must all live together irrespective of caste, creed, sex, religion and region. We are all Indians. We are all Bharatiyas. We should keep it in mind and see to it that we teach our children this sort of thinking and culture. This is one thought I have. And the second thought is that there is need for reforms. Of course, the Prime Minister gave a three-line mantra, reform, perform and transform. He brought so many reforms. I am not going to get into details. But some more reforms are required in view of the experience we have in public life. We must see to it that the political, judicial, economic and social reforms are expedited for the betterment of the public life of India and also to make our we are the largest parliamentary democracy in the world. We feel proud about it, but certain weaknesses that have crept in, shortcomings that have come out, aberrations or whatever you call, we must take care of them. One is we should see to it that people with criminal background are avoided from, from politics. Character, caliber, capacity and conduct. That should be the criteria to select and elect people. But unfortunately, caste, creed, cash and community, they have replaced these forces. We must see to it that we go back to the original forces. And secondary, we must also see to it that immediate disposal of the cases pending against particularly politicians with criminal cases, they should be disposed of at the earliest. For years, criminal cases are pending and people are occupying various positions. I am not referring to particular party or persons in general. This is the agitating the minds of the people and spoiling the image of the country. And the third one is, we should also see to it and bring reforms that this election related cases, they are disposed of by special bench or special tribunals. Election cases of 2009, 2014, 2019 are still pending. It's really a shame to the 
system. We should see to it that such cases are disposed of within a particular period, one year or maximum two years. Otherwise, there is no meaning. When you get erected, there is a case against you, that tenure is over, then again elections take place and still it continues and the third tenure starts. This should be put to an end. And then the judicial reforms that we need is about the appointment of judges. I am not going into the dispute, but I am of the clear view the judges should not appoint judges. But at the same time, the government also should not appoint judges. There should be a system. And we must all evolve, whatever you call it as National Judicial Commission or whatever it is. The other day, the present Vice President also spoke about the same. This is not to cast aspirations on the judiciary. But we know what is happening. Keeping that in mind, we should bring reforms in such a manner after a wider debate and discussion and sharing our experiences, pooling our experiences together, we must bring judicial reforms. And then educational reforms. Educational reforms, thanks to Kasturi Rangan Committee report, we have the new educational policy. There has to be an in-depth and wider debate across the country. And we must really come to certain conclusions to have Indian education system. We must give up the colonial education system, give up the colonial mindset, and we must get back to our roots, and we must have education based on Indian values, ethos, and morals. That is very, very important, and we should start teaching our children right from the primary level. Then, language policy. As I said, I'm very clear that we should really promote, encourage, propagate our mother tongue. We have rich languages. We should feel proud of them. I am not against any language, including English. We must learn in as many languages as possible. But first is mother tongue. First mother tongue then brother tongue, later any other tongue. No problem. I am saying it in a lighter manner, but we should first see to it our primary education is carried in our mother tongue. Children start educating themselves in the mother tongue. That is very, very important. Later you can go to other medium of instruction, including English. English is an international language, no doubt about it. But don't be under illusion that all the foreign heads are the great people of the world. They speak English, the French, the Russian, the German, the many. Those, those heads, they come to India. I also met them. When I was vice president, I received some of them. To my knowledge, to my surprise, many of them were not speaking in English. So one day I asked Sushma Swaraj, late Sushma Swaraj, my sister, why these people are not speaking in English? Are they not familiar in English? He said, some of them, yes, but they don't speak. They feel proud to speak in their mother tongue and there is a translation. So that is the position, but we try to speak in English. Whether we, we have the full knowledge of English or not, we think it's a fashion to speak in English. This also has to be anything. And then le learning as many languages as possible, English also. Nobody should have any opposition. That's why when I come to this side, there are strong views about various languages. My simple prescription for that is no imposition of any language on people. No imposition, no opposition. That is my proposition, and that should be the position. Why should we? I thought it's my duty, and it's very important, to encourage mother tongue. So I used to request the members to speak in their mother tongue. And we made a provision, now you can speak in any of the 22 scheduled languages. It was there, but system has been now evolved. I would like that it should be improved further,
and people of india from any state they will be able to speak in their respective mother tongue or people call it as regional language i don't call them as regional languages they are all national language tamil is a national language of course media coined that word regional language we should respect other languages and try to develop knowledge and proficiency in as many languages as possible then with regard to economic reforms these reforms the ultimate aim of any reform should be making the life of the people more comfortable happiness happiness is the ultimate aim of research or reform people should be living in happiness simply enriching ourselves becoming rich is not going to give you happiness you need something more it's not all ease of doing business ease of living comfortable camaraderie or brotherly or sisterly that sort of atmosphere should be developed and governments at the state and the center they should really encourage the system and promote that happiness among the people that is also the reform that is required and then people living in different states of different origins they must also be provided to have education in their mother tongue everybody should follow the state language first then later there should be an opportunity to study or speak in their respective mother tongue also that is also equally important when i go abroad and meet a people of indian origin i tell them do not forget your roots in house you speak in your mother tongue but because now you are in america or france or any other country follow their rules and regulations because they are the host country the same thing applies to non tamils living in chennai they should respect the language here try to learn tamil encourage children to learn tamil but at the same time they should also have the facility to have promotion of their respective mother tongues this is also another reform that is required then the legislature and parliament there is a need for reform there is a need for voluntary code of conduct by political parties otherwise what is happening in assembly and parliament sometimes it disturbs the people and people feel what is happening and people they get elected to assembly and then they fight they tear the papers sometimes they they tear their clothes also and use abusive language earlier people used to abuse each other but now the latest trend is abusing mother and father also <laughs> a very serious situation situation is developing and people do not have that decency decorum and dignity we go to parliament and assembly to discuss debate and decide you yes you have a difference of opinion you express it talk out or walk out but don't do a break out because it will create all out for democracy and our system we can differ with the government let the government propose let the opposition oppose let the house dispose how people say sir we are very agitated we have one member here vaiko very always gets very agitated <laughs> emotional he is an emotional man well read and also punctual always to come to parliament so members should come to legislature and parliament regularly should not simply sign and go away and then create noise what is required is voice not noise in legislature and parliament people you argue your case try to convince the government 
and if the government is not agreeable, agree to disagree, that's all. Walk out. There is no other way. In a democracy, one must go by the mandate of the people. You must have tolerance. Some people say, sir, there is no tolerance. You must also be tolerant to the other man's view. Na? You must be tolerant to the mandate of the people. We must also respect the elected representatives, the MLA, MP, the chief minister. Chief minister, respect to the party, the chief minister. Elected by the people. When you criticize him, you must criticize him in such a polite manner. In a dignified language. Not in an abusive manner. Not only the chief minister, even the opposition leader, the prime minister. They are all elected by the people. And we must really show respect to the institution. Not only to individual, to the institution. And the language we must use also, we use also must be polite, decent, respectable to each other. And politicians, they should really think that we are only rivals, not enemies. I am here in Tamil Nadu. Often we find sometimes people do not attend to other party man's marriage or funeral sometimes. That was passed, now slowly change is coming. That changes should really happen. It will not come by any legislative measures. The political party should select and nominate such good people who will raise the standard in public life. This is another desire of mine. And then this, you, we are seeing gender discrimination even now. The women, they do not get adequate representation. I do not know why the women's reservation bill is pending for long in parliament. I was also a presiding officer. I used to talk to members privately. They say, sir, how can you forego our membership, sir? If we give 33 percent, then 67 percent of us will be out. They constitute 50 percent of the population. We must understand. And we must give them the due share. This is also another reform that is required at the earliest political parties should really show their commitment, sincerity by adhering. Whether it is 33 percent or 35 percent or 25 percent, I am not getting into that. You should move in the direction of giving. We need not have any doubt. You see, in the local bodies, we have preservation. They are excelling there, given an opportunity. So we should not really hesitate and delay it uh, further. And then, with regard to the international community also, we must all work together and see to it that these economic, economic figatives who loot and cheat and run away, they are brought back at the earliest. Not this man or that man. I don't know. The, some of the countries saying that uh, our laws do not allow this. The international community must come to an understanding. Anybody who violates the rules and regulations of a country or commits fraud on the people, they should be held over back to that respective country. That has to be. And no country should interfere in the internal affairs of the other country. Every country is sovereign. And this United Nations, we are one-sixth of the world population. Still, we are not permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. This is really very disturbing. So, the international community also must come to an understanding, the so-called Big Five. Why should they have any veto? Simply because they are economically rich or militarily powerful. Yes, there should be the democratization of United Nations Security Council should happen at the earliest. Democratization. And India not being a permanent member, I sometimes really feel very sad for what is happening. These are some of the thoughts that have come to my mind. And uh, I wanted to share some of these thoughts and the need for reforms in the 
various sectors. There are many more, but I am confining myself to some of these thoughts. My dear friends, this evening is a wonderful evening for me. After demitting my office as the Vice President, after completion of my tenure, I have come back. I have no grievance because I got everything. I come from a rural background, son of an ordinary farmer. I never imagined that I will go to this level of occupying the second highest constitutional position. What else you require? In the school, in the college, in the university, at various levels, the chairmanship or the presidentship has come to me. I was youth wing president at the state, vice president at the national level, general secretary in the state, general secretary at the national level, president of the party at the state, and then president of the party at the national level. I handled rural development ministry, urban development ministry, and many more other ministries. Then I became vice president. What else you require? So I always feel really satisfied of the opportunities I got. Now I think the reason for my success is the background which Guru Murthy has mentioned, the samskara, the initial training given to all of us by the RSS discipline, hard work. And uh, the second thing is hard work, as I was mentioning, I could occupy. And third thing is commitment, never changing parties. When I got elected, and I, and I stood for election, people said, why you are standing from this party? And some elderly people, they frightened me, said, this is a North Indian party, this is an urban party, this is a party of educated, and one leader told me, this is a party of vegetarians. I was worried, first three things, I was keeping quiet. <laughs> because I am a born non-vegetarian. <laughs> then I went to the state RSS chief, I asked him, he said, no, no, there is no such rule. We don't uh, serve vegetarian and non-vegetarian foods because we are coming for a meeting, not for eating, <laughs> for a day or two or for a training. So we don't have separate arrangements because it uh, also economically, it is costly and also no need for such a short period. You can have happily, you can enjoy whatever food you want. You can invite us also, we will also come and happily eat with you. <laughs> this is all. So he allayed my fears. And since then, I never look back, looked back. That's why, that's one of the reasons. Of course, when you, the another reform I want, going by my own experiences, if it becomes inevitable, if the leader becomes dictatorial, if the party do not give you an opportunity to you and then deviates from the original ideology, you can change. We are in democracy. And we are seeing what is happening also. But when we change the party, we must give up the membership on whose ticket we got elected. This is another reform that is badly required. There is, of course, anti-defection law, but the anti-defection law is if you change singularly, you are disqualified. If you change along with others, two-thirds, you can. That means the defection along with others is only affection. It is not a defection. That should not be the case. You can change the party any time, but you must give up the membership you got from that respective party. This is also very much required because we are seeing people getting elected on one party and get going into the other party and becoming ministers also there. And then people are trying to really, when they defect, it is affection. When others defect, it is only defection. 
and they are doing it with perfection. What is happening all these years? So we must have that reform also, my dear friends. Once again, um, I'm very happy that after demitting my office, I came here to Chennai. Chennai is a city which I like very much. Chennai city, Chennai people, the Tamil language, Chennai food also, very good food. And I used to enjoy food of this state right from my student days. And uh, whenever I find time, because I am neighbor to Chennai, Nelur, I used to come to Chennai and I will be coming to Chennai also, spending good amount of time. Another reason for my affection to Chennai is that my daughter lives here. <laughs> my daughter and my son and grandson and all. So I will be frequently coming here. But our friends, Sri Subharadi Garu, Sri Narasaradi, Sri Chakravarti Naidu and Ravi Sanaradi, they all thought we should have an occasion to meet and greet. That's why this evening get together has been organized. Thank you very much. Nandri, Onakam. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable message. Now I request Sri Ravi Sana Redigaru on the behalf of the organizing committee to propose the word of thanks. Okay. It is really a great privilege to stand in front of you to do the word of thanks. So, the words of thanks, <laughs> words of thanks. I know what, I, uh, uh, the, uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, I want to thank all of you, the, especially the ministers, the uh, MPs, all the leaders, elders especially, and the, all the various dignitaries from various walks of life. For all of you in such a short notice, you all have come and uh, were here to meet and greet uh, the great personality which you all have heard from various speakers and uh, since he said it is a meet, greet and then eat, there is also a high tea arranged in the other hall. So please join us for high tea. I want to thank all the media, media team members who have come both from the electronic and uh, uh, print media and uh, all the hotel staff for ca taking care of all the arrangements and also the uh, 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 the security and police staff for all the arrangements. Thank you very much. Thank you.